Project Lift story is result of civic effort. Clinton's first Little Italy festival becomes a reality this weekend, less than five months after the civic project was actually approved. Two months prior to that time, it was just a dream. One of those remote possibilities that often die before they are born or succumb to the rigors of growing pains. Many of the plans laid during the past few months failed to materialize, largely due to lack of time and funds, but they will not be forgotten. Already expanded programs for next year's festival are in the exploratory stages and Clinton's second Little Italy Festival is certain to offer much more, not only to tourists, but to the city's future. Briefly, the festival developed from a Clinton Lions Club project suggested in early February to build a simple, attractive planter across the Elm and Water Street intersection to replace a highway barrier erected at the site of the old Wabash River Bridge. Robert Jackson, chairman of the Lions Project Committee, made the proposal for the planter, which was estimated to cost some $300. A committee composed of Mr. Jackson, Jay Parrish, Dominic Avenetti, and Bill Wake was named to investigate. At the time, at almost the same time, Mr. Wake, who is news editor of the Daily Clintonian and a local photographer, was asked at a meeting of the Chamber of Commerce to take a picture of some Clinton scene which would be representative of the city in television spot promotions. In a newspaper column of February 18th, the editor mentioned the fact there seemed to be no really appropriate building or scene for the purposes and suggested a possible tie-in with the Lions Club project. Suggestions from Clintonian readers began to come in by letter and by telephone. Committee men Jackson, Gillio, and Wake held an impromptu meeting at the proposed planter site, and their ideas, combined with those sent in by readers, were discussed. In a follow-up article on March 17th, the Clintonian writer outlined a tourist promotion plan, which was beginning to take shape with the Little Italy theme in mind. The response was terrific. A subsequent meeting of Clinton Lyons, Mr. Gillio, then president of the organization, advised the Club of Developments, and the Lyons were given an opportunity to vote on the original planter idea or to abandon that proposal in favor of a community-wide tourist promotion, which it felt would benefit the entire area. The unanim they unanimously agreed on the latter, and Mr. Wake was appointed Lions chairman for of the project. Other local organizations were invited to participate at the first public meeting held on April 19th. Representatives of 30 area organizations were present. Mr. Wake and Mr. Gillio acted as co-chairmen. Sketches of suggested fountains, planters, speaker band platforms, and general old world scenic settings were shown and discussed and some idea of what was wanted was formed. The, proje the name Project Lift was enthusiastically endorsed by Mi when Mr. Wake pointed out that the first letters of Little Italy Festival Town spell the word lift and expressed the hope that it would indeed provide a lift for the community. The Italian theme seemed a natural since at one time the city had a thriving settlement of immigrants from Italy in the northwest part of town. Clinton is still widely acclaimed for its fine foreign cuisine and has been hailed as the Spaghetti Town for many years. While the city's original Little Italy settlement was in the North 9th Street area, it was agreed that the Wabash Riverfront, the city's front door, be improved and beautified first. Expansion into the real Little Italy area was to come as time and funds permitted. Only minor atmosphere settings have been made there this year, but more impressive projects are in the works. Finding it advisable to incorporate Attorney Joe Beardsley prepared the papers and, at a public meeting, nine directors were named. The directors then selected officers and drew lots for the length of term each is to serve. They are eligible for re-election. Mr. Wake was chosen as the first president of Lyft Incorporated, one-year term. Ernie Gillio, first vice president, one year. Bob Welker, second vice president, three years. Claire Fernando, recording secretary, one year. Evelyn Icoli, responding, corresponding secretary, two years. Ruby Gallagher, treasurer, three years. Roy Devon, three years. 
Ray, Ave, and Mr. Beardsley each two year terms. At one of the early planning meetings, Don Lindsay came up with a drawing of a proposed project emblem, which was accepted by the group present. It consisted of an outline map of Indiana with the words Little Italy Festival Town and a map of Italy with an arrow designating the Clinton era. A Roman Revels review was the first fundraising activity other than general solicitation. Mrs. Fernando and Mr. Ave were co-chairmen of the successful endeavor. With grapevines to be one of the important atmosphere settings along the riverfront, one of the first actual steps toward preparing the area for a festival was the planting of vines on the terraces south of the proposed fountain and north where the where a band platform dance slab was to be constructed. Joe Irola was in charge of the grapevines project and almost single-handedly planted and cultivated the lines, the vines, then later built the sturdy and attractive arbors. Much time was lost in the deciding upon a fountain only to have the whole thing blow up just over a month ago when an Indianapolis firm, which, it, which was to have built the superstructure of fiberglass, disclosed that it would not be able to make delivery. A worried committee of directors, which included Mr. Gilio, Beardsley, Welker, and Wake, made a rush trip to the Capitol for a hurried consultation. They picked up some ideas, but the present beautiful fountain at Elm and Water Streets is unique. It was built without blueprints or photographs, and, like Topsy, just grew. Lyft was fortunate in having concrete experts like Ed and Frank Pitch Pitchkites, carpenters and construction workers like J.P. Remler, Bob, and Bernando, and Pernan and plumbing experts like Henry Shortridge and dedicated workers like Joe Reed, Roy Devon, and Ernie Gillio to keep work in moving. Many others worked when possible. Some were active behind the scenes for it was a fine example of combined civic effort. Many share credit for first festival. Speaking in behalf of officers and directors of Lyft, Little Italy Festival Town Incorporated, President Bill Wake today expressed his appreciation for the fine support shown by the community in presenting the first Little Italy Festival in Clinton, Indiana. Almost every organization in the area has made financial contributions. Many local businesses have also made donations and contributions from individuals have run from $1 to $500. All are equally appreciated because all were for the same purpose, to put the city on the map with a genuine tourist attraction. Extra benefits have been an increase in civic pride, a decision to make next year's effort bigger and better and a wholesome willingness to cooperate work and give for community improvement the directors also wish to thank those interested citizens who sent in letters of encouragement and suggestions on with on things which might be done to put on an interesting and successful festival some of these ideas have been carried out some will have to wait but all the all of these letters are on file for future consideration Members of various committees have worked hard and faithfully and deserve much of the credit for projects accomplished. They have earned a sincere vote of thanks, but their greatest reward will be the knowledge of a job well done. Directors Ernie Gillio, Bob Welker, Claire Fernando, Evelyn Icoli, Ruby Gallagher, Roy Devon, Joe Beardsley, Ray Ave, and Mr. Wake humbly say thank you all.